Hi. We're here to talk about overcurrent protection for a transformer. More specifically, we're going to talk about overcurrent protection for a transformer over 750 volts. So when we're going into the Canadian Electrical Code, Section 26, it's important that we're dealing with the right rule to make sure we're applying the right process to a transformer. So with a transformer, uh, over 750 volts, we are dealing with 26, 2, 5, 2. So in this situation right here, we're going to deal with all 26, 2, 5, 2. Uh, we're dealing with a 4160 to 277, 480, three-phase transformer, 60 kVA with a 7.5% IZ. Now, this situation here, we've got a feeder overcurrent, which is protecting this transformer as well as other loads. So we want to make sure that this feeder overcurrent isn't too big, so it still provides us with the appropriate short circuit protection for our transformer. If it doesn't, we may need to add a... Uh, individual primary overcurrent protection for the transformer. We're also going to size the secondary overcurrent. Now secondary overcurrent isn't required by code, but sometimes in the field on site we might be required one by the engineer or just based on the type of load we might need one. So in order to start, what I want to do is I want to figure out what my primary current is or my I primary. I'm going to need to know this in order to double check that this overcurrent is okay. So we're into 26252. Because we're dealing with a secondary overcurrent, we're actually going to spend most of our time in a sub rule 4. So we go to 26252 sub rule 4. It says uh, use the stuff based off of table 50. So what we want to do is we want to solve for our I primary. So we're going to go I primary equals the VA, 60,000 VA. Uh, we are going to divide that by the voltage, which is 4160 volts, multiplied by root 3. I like to put the bottom side there in brackets. What this is going to give us, right, root 3, because it's a three-phase transformer, we get an I primary of 8.3 amps. So what we want to do is we want to take this 8.3 amps. So this would be our uh, primary OC. We're going to take 8.3 amps. We're going to take it to table 50. Table 50 tells us that in that voltage range with that percent IZ range, right, 750 or, or not more than 750, we are actually going to use 600% multiplier for that. So we go 8.3 times 600% is going to give us 49.9 amps. Now we cannot exceed that rating, meaning, right, the rule says we cannot exceed 600% the rated primary current. Once we take that to Table 13, table 13 would tell us a 45 amp overcurrent device on the primary. So if this was greater than 45 amps, we would require one there based off of sub rule one using that calculation. Uh, so either way, if this is 45 amps or less, then we are good to go and we do not need an additional individual primary overcurrent device. So that's how we would size that or make sure that this one is okay. I'm going to say that this is 45 amps and we'll call her good to go. That would be the max OC would be 45 amps. Uh, where it gets a little more interesting is talking about the secondary. So with the secondary, we're still in sub rule 4. It tells us the same thing. It's going to be based off of table 50. Right, 26252, sub rule 4. Um, what we want to do is we need to know our secondary current. So I secondary is going to be the same thing. 60,000 VA divided by, we're going to use our 480 or our line voltage times root 3. 
which gives us a secondary current of 72.1 amps. So with that information uh, for our secondary OC, uh, we're going to go to take our 72.1 amps. We're going to take that to table 50. Now based on our 7.5% IZ and the voltage and the fact that we are using a circuit breaker, uh, it tells us we can use 250% of the rated secondary current. So what we do with that information is we go, okay, 72.1 amps times 250%. That is going to give us 180.25 amps. So our overcurrent cannot exceed this value, much like the primary, which means when we go to table 13 to size our overcurrent device, what we end up with is we are going to end up with a 175 amp OC on the secondary. So that is how we would size our primary and secondary, right? Uh, sub rule three was the one that told us if our branch circuit is good, then we don't require an additional individual primary overcurrent. Um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, feel free to check out my other videos.